Um, when we talk about population, okay, keep in mind that demographics is going to be the study of the characteristics of a population. Uh, we are going to talk about several different types of things. Um, it's really important to speak about Malthus. You can't get around it. Um, Malthus is going to be the guy who is going to write um, a hypothesis um, that the world will uh, end up exceeding its population limits um, and that we will not have enough food for people uh, to survive. Um, that, in fact, has not happened. Uh, the actual food production has been higher than not this is uh, predicted because of the Green Revolution, um, also better farming techniques. Um, the actual population has uh, grown much higher than Malthus, which Malthus would, uh, Malthus would actually say makes his um, theory, okay, it actually solidifies it and even gives it more um, yeah, support Okay, in the idea that the population has grown much higher than he thought it would because uh, your LDCs of the world are going to hit stage two where the death rate will drop and therefore your natural increase rate will rise. Um, the other thing to think about is possibilism. A lot of people will suggest that there is going to be uh, and that there will be ways in which we can produce more food, we can come up with more energy, um, more grains equals more uh, solutions to this issue, and other people would argue that Malthus tree was completely flawed, uh, particularly people like Karl Marx, um, who are going to suggest that you have enough food, it's just not evenly spread out, hence okay, his idea for communism. When we talk about uh, the population demographics, please keep in mind okay, that you are going to have the CDR, uh, that's going to be your true death rate, Okay, your true birth rate. All of these are the number of, okay, whichever it is, births divided by 1,000 people um, in okay, the uh, group. Okay. Additionally, okay, same thing here, number of deaths per 1,000 people. Okay. Another big one to think about is natural increase rate. You will take your CDR and you will subtract your CDR and you will get your NIR. Your NIR, keep in mind, okay, that if your CDR is um, astronomically high, we'll go ahead and say, oh, I don't know, a 20, and your CDR is 5, and when you subtract those, you're going to have 15. Okay, uh, the NIR can never be 15, guys. The NIR okay, is typically going to be something um, under. Three or four. If you have a NIR higher than four, you are um, you're in trouble. Okay, so really, when you consider this, you need to move the decimal. Okay, it's going to be a 1.5, which is still okay, pretty high. Um, <clears throat> when we talk about the uh, NIR, you also have to consider that inside the CDR you have the IMR, which is your infant mortality rate. That's also going to be the number of infant deaths under the age of one. Okay, per 1,000 people. Okay, so infants under one, okay, their deaths. Um, typically, the less developed countries will have higher infant mortality rates. They will have higher natural uh, natural increase rates. They will have higher crude birth rates. Okay, typically the United States, although we like to think that we're very advanced, our crude death rate is actually higher than most other places because we have such a large population of elderly people, and that's a good thing um, because we also have a very long life expectancy. So people are surviving much longer in the United States um, and other NDCs. Keep in mind, NDC, more developed country, LDC, less developed country. When we're talking about the demographic transition model, okay, you won't have to draw out of anything crazy like that, but do keep in mind okay, that you will have four stages. I will not talk about a fifth stage unless I use the word hypothetical. Okay, keep in mind that your crude and de uh, birth rates and your crude death rates are going to be highest. Okay, no matter what, they're going to be highest in stage one. And that's going to be where you're roaming around, a okay, nomadic, uh, really 8,000 BC to, it depends on the country. If we're talking about an MDC, okay, an MDC will hit stage two around 17. 50, and that is because of the Industrial Revolution. During the Industrial Revolution, you will start to see the death rate drop off. It will continue to drop a little bit okay, in this area, and okay, you will see it kind of level off in stage four. If you're looking at the birth rate, it's 
important to note that the Industrial Revolution does not decrease the birth rate. People are urbanizing, uh, they are moving in from the country because of the enclosure movement, they are looking for jobs. However, they have a large amount of children because that was the tradition. Uh, children were also helpful on the farms. However, once you move into the city, you realize hey, that children are really just kind of a burden and they suck money out of you. Um, the other problem they is going to be that they uh, birth will still be relatively high because they're still accounting for a high infant mortality rate. So if you wanted to have 10 children, no, that, that's a lot. Okay, if you wanted to have four children, um, you would have maybe uh, eight children to make sure that four survive. Okay, so you no longer have to do that because of health and sanitation. You're going to have a lowering death rate, which means that your children would survive all the way of them, whether you want it or not, um, which is horrible to say, but they are all going to survive. So therefore, you're still going to have a pretty high birth rate. Birth rate will not really drop until stage three. That is going to become um, pretty much because of economic um, situations. Women will have um, higher literacy rates. Women will enter the workforce. You also have the invention in the 1970s with the birth control pill. Uh, you will see people putting off um, child uh, birth and having children until after they have started their career. And um, some of them really just want to spend their money on their own leisure time, which may not be conducive for um, carrier monkeys. Okay. Um, the stage four. Okay, it's going to be the part where we pretty much level off, sorry that wasn't very good, level off, to where the NIR okay, will almost be zero, uh, which means that you are going to have zero population growth. Okay, So whatever your NIR is, your, or I'm sorry, whatever your TBR is, your TBR will equal that, and you're no longer going to have growth. Okay, You typically, in this stage, okay, stage one, you will start out in kind of a rough um, maybe not the best, okay, uh, I don't know, standard of living, better standard of living over here in stage four, okay. <clears throat> Additionally, okay, that's going to be your MDC idea. What about your LDC? And LDC does not enter stage two until the 1950s. And that is because of the medical revolution, which is going to be brought to them from MDCs. So the MDCs are going to bring them medical care, their death rate will drop. Unfortunately, most of them, okay, are stuck. And that is simply because in those less developed countries, women are not working um, for religious purposes. They still may have really high CBRs. Uh, think of Latin America. Um, other issues are going to be traditional uh, cultural practices of having a large number of children. Um, and uh, you're going to see them stuck at stage two, which is why if we're going to talk about the population crisis, it's certainly happening in LDCs. If you remember, when we talked about the world population, it has done something like this. It has grown exponentially really since okay, 1750 and then uh, 1950. And since then, okay, almost all of that growth, if we kind of look at it, okay, this right here might be your NBCs. The rest is going to be really left up to your LDCs. So we're still um, really populating a lot. Um, when we talk about okay, the demographic transition model, there are all, th uh, all types of things that are going to contribute okay, to people moving along. You cannot move in reverse. Okay? You cannot do that. And remember, a stage five would be the idea that you may actually end up with a natural decrease rate. But again, that will not happen unless I say the word hypothetical. You will not have to think about stage five. Um, when we are talking about demographics, we will also perhaps have to read a, an a sex pyramid. Okay, sex pyramid, if you remember, okay, it's going to look something like this, okay, it'll look something like this, because they're missing a lot of people over here, sorry, okay, you are going to end up having um, probably a decreasing population, because okay, you see that there's a lot of middle-aged people, very few younger people, okay, that's going to be a huge dependency uh, ratio issue when these people become much older. Um, dependency ratio is going to be the number of dependents, okay, per productive members of society. Remember that your uh, dependents are going to be ages uh, 0 to 14, okay, and they are also going to be uh, 65 and up. Okay, now we say that they are dependents because they are non-productive members of society. They are not uh, actually making an income anymore to be able to support themselves, and so instead it's left up to the production okay, or the producers in society 
um, to take care of them. This good example would be maybe Japan, Italy, Denmark, etc. Um, the United States, okay, looks a little bit more like this. Okay, it gets smaller at the top, but really we're talking about a column. If it looks more like a column, okay, they're all going to get smaller at the top simply because okay, we all end up dying at some point. Um, but if it looks more like a column, this is going to be steady growth. Okay, the major problem that we are talking about in the LDC okay, is where you're going to have exponential growth. Okay, it's going to look something like this. Okay, and it will only continue to widen the base, which means that you're going to have a lot of um, a lot of people in the population. This is also a dependency ratio issue because you have a lot of people under the age of 14 that need to be cared for and you do not have enough people okay, in your productive range to be able to care for them. Also keep in mind how to read an age-sex ratio, uh, ratio in male and female. Okay, you're also going to have to think about age, um, older you are, the higher uh, up you are. Okay, another good example, if the males okay, are going to be um, rather small, okay, so we'll say like, okay, um, and we'll talk about females, okay, something like this. You may have to think about something that would have caused that, like a war. Um, also think about really weird things, okay, where all of a sudden it jumps out and maybe a military base, actually. If we did that, it would be a military base because there'd be more men. Um, but if we did this, it might be a college chat. Okay. Um, epidemiological transition model, you might want to take a look at it, but think about all of the reasons for death okay, inside the demographic transition model. Um, when we talk about a uh, transition model, we will also talk about migration transition. Okay, and that is the idea of where do people move during part of the demographic transition model. Typically, in stage one, they don't move very much. They're running around chasing animals for food. Okay, stage two, uh, you will have them really move internationally a great deal here for economic opportunity. Um, a good example of this is Europe when they hit the Industrial Revolution. It, it's actually a, what we like to call it, the safety valve is the United States because so many people are able to leave which is a good thing for Europe because they would have had massive um, unemployment and probably some serious poverty issues. Uh, when we talk about migration in general, okay, keep in mind that a move to any new location, a relatively permanent move, is going to be migration. Your day in and day out movements okay, are typically going to be your circulation and your ability to do so is going to be your mobility. Um, when we talk about in migration, okay, in migration means that there are going to be more Okay, immigrants, I am, okay, coming into the country, then there are people going out. So in migration is going to be larger okay, than emigration, okay, EM, make an exit. Okay, if you were talking about out migration, okay, it would be the opposite. Okay, something, oops, sorry, opposite. My brain was almost fried. Okay, going like this. Okay. Um, the only time in the United States that this has happened is during the Great Depression. Okay? Otherwise, we have always had net in migration. Um, when we talk about pull factors, those are going to be the things that induce people to move in. You're going to have push factors, things that are going to um, induce people to leave an area. Um, unfortunately, sometimes people do not have the choice on whether they go somewhere. Uh, those are going to be called forced, uh, forced migrants. Usually this is for cultural reasons. A good example of those are going to be in, uh, internally displaced people, IDPs or refugees. Um, if you think about refugees, okay, you're going to have internal refugees and international refugees. Internal means that they are only going to be forced to move within their own country. I really want you to think about uh, Colombia, okay, all of the people in rural Colombia being forced into the city. Um, and then you're going to have Sudan. Now Sudan, I want you to think about it. Okay, we know that there was a wrong in this aspect because Sudan is now two countries. And so indeed it's international. Uh, an international refugee. However, okay, uh, for the sake of the test, if you get to a question about that, okay, make sure and keep in mind that Sudan will also have the largest number of internal. In terms of international, you're going to have the Afghans, okay, so people from Afghanistan, leaving to either Pakistan or Iran, and the Palestinians. 
Um, when we talk about uh, a large group of talented people leaving an area, it is going to be called brain drain. Um, you also need to think about the most common reason for voluntary migration, and that is going to be economic. Um, so when we talk about something hindering a person's migration, keep in mind that if there is an intervening obstacle, people will no longer be able to move forward, although they want to. An intervening opportunity is the idea that they will not move forward, but they also have chosen that. They have decided to stay in a place, usually for some sort of opportunity on the way to their uh, final destination. We're going to talk about uh, a little bit about quotas. You need to make sure that you know what a quota is. The idea that you can set limits on the amount of immigration into your country. The United States really did this in the 1920s, um, primarily because people quit coming from Northwest Europe. Um, if you did not look like a Northwestern uh, European, really, they were starting to um, set quotas and limits. Um, another good example in the 1920s was the Chinese Exclusion Act, which is going to forbid anyone from Asia coming over for about 10 years. Um, when we talk about immigration today, you are going to have uh, a large amount of Latin Americans today, also some Asian Americans today, really Latin America and Asia uh, since the 1970s. We're going to talk about Southeast and Eastern Europeans, okay, really during the early 1900s. Uh, you're going to have Northeast, I'm um, sorry, Northwest Europeans during the colonial age and Africans during the colonial age as well. Um, today, we have a great deal of undocumented immigrants as well. Think of Mexico. Um, and not all of them from Mexico, but also consider okay, Latin America in general. Um, you also need to keep in mind okay, that uh, chain migration is at play here, where they will move to an area where there's already a large amount of people from their ethnic background, or okay, more likely they're going to move in to meet with someone that's in their family. <clears throat> um, Intra-regional and inter-regional trends. Okay, if we talk about inter-regional trends, I want you to think of the idea of moving from one region of a country to another region of a country. Right now, we in the United States tend to be moving from the north central, okay, so think of the Rust Belt, the ones where unfortunately a lot of factories have shut down, and you are seeing them move um, inter-regionally to the southwest. It could be because of climate, it could be because of job opportunities. Um, Intra-regional is going to be either uh, urban, okay, to suburban, um, or suburban to rural, or counter-urbanization, which would be the idea of just skipping directly from urban to uh, rural. When you talk about this, okay, the trend in the United States okay, is going to be really going from urban okay, to suburban, which okay, is actually what we are. We are a perfect example of that. Okay, in the world, they are doing the opposite. Think about it, we okay, urbanized much, much faster and much earlier than they did. Um, you now have LBCs that are urbanizing and they are not going from urban to suburban for a better quality of life. Instead, they're actually moving from rural, which tends to be a more traditional society and more traditional economy, uh, into the cities. And so they're going to be treated um, uh, with maybe better opportunities in terms of uh, economics. Okay, in the city. So in the world, okay, we're talking rural to urban. In the U.S., okay, we're talking urban to suburban. Um, we also have talked a little bit about uh, guest workers, the idea that guest workers are going to come from North Africa and the Middle East and maybe even South um, East okay, Europe. Those are going to be people that are treated, uh, unfortunately, rather um, poorly. Okay, they will see, be seen as foreigners. They will work in those countries, usually with jobs that um, the other okay, people do not want within their countries. A good example of this is in France. Um, a lot of times they will send home the money that they make, uh, and those are going to be called remittances. Um, typically they're young men, and I think if you guys remember, okay, they kind of live a sad life. A lot of times they'll hang out at train stations looking for someone that might be from the country of their origins. 